If you want to start up a business in Nigeria where you have limited capital, then this video is for you, okay? Watch this video and you'll be able to understand how to go about doing just that. In this video, I'll be sharing with you guys five profitable business ideas that you can start with 50 to 100,000 Naira as startup capital. This business is ideal for 9 to 5 workers who wants to have an extra business on the side, is ideal for um, stay at home moms, it is also ideal for students. In fact, anyone, okay, and everyone can start up any of these business ideas I mentioned here and still be able to make good income. So after watching this video till the end, you'll be able to have a good idea on how to start up that business that you've always wanted to start but don't know how to go about it. Hey guys, welcome back again to my YouTube channel. My name is Betty. You're welcome to Chandra's Corner. In this channel, we we'll talk about content creation, growth tips, entrepreneurship and business ideas and various ways to make money on the online space. If these are the kind of videos you enjoy watching, please click on the subscribe button to join the family. And don't forget to turn on your post notification too, so that whenever I upload videos like this on my channel, you'll be the first to know. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you guys so much for always coming back to watch my videos. Now, the first business idea I have here on my list is house cleaning business or housekeeping business. Okay. This business is actually very lucrative, but People do not talk about it so much. The fantastic thing about this particular business idea is you do not even need up to 50,000 Naira to be able to start it. Why did I say that? Okay, most houses or at least most houses who are willing to outsource cleaning their homes would definitely have something like mop, something like bucket, um, brush, you know, this um, sweeping brush or even broom. Most houses have this basic cleaning supply. So you don't need to worry as yourself about um, buying big, heavy um, equipment for a start. Okay. You can look forward to it as like a goal that you work towards once your business picks up. But you don't need to have it like to start up the business immediately. So um, if you discuss with your clients, most of them will tell you, okay, I have room. I have this. I have that. But to be on the safe side. If you have 50,000 Naira, you can bring out 20,000 Naira out of that 50,000 Naira and get mob, get buckets, get um, brooms and brushes, okay? All these things will help make your cleaning easier. Once you've gotten the basic mob, broom and brush, then you can now buy cleaning agents like detergents, uh, what's it called, air fresheners, like disinfectants and all of that, things that will make your cleaning easier. You can invest in this. The other 30,000. Keep it first. Let I will tell you what you use it for. You have to decide also what kind of cleaning will you want to do. Will you want to go into industrial cleaning, like newly built houses? If you're cleaning newly built houses, bear it in mind that this broom and and the packer and uh, uh, brushes might not suffice, okay? Because those new or freshly built houses have like plasters, paint stains. There are things on the tiles that you would really need, like. Um, better things to be able to scrub them okay you can think about hiring um, heavy duty cleaning equipment if you're going to if you really intend to clean houses that are newly built there are places where you can hire heavy duty cleaning equipment you hire it for a fee and you use it to clean if you don't have capital and you really want to start up a cleaning business that you can do is of course once you advertise yourself and you start getting clients you know that you will not just go and start a job, okay, until, except somebody gives you commission for it. Like this person commits to you starting this job. So you can have like a percentage where somebody gives a down payment to show their commitment to you cleaning their houses, their apartments and their offices. And then at the end of your cleaning job, after you're done to, and the person is satisfied with, of course, the job that you do, then they give you the balance. So you can have like a 60% um, down payment. And then at the end of your job, you you collect your your forty percent balance. Now this sixty percent that has been given to you, you can use it to buy um, cleaning agents that you will use for your cleaning business. Now you remember the thirty thousand naira I say you should set aside. Use that one to buy data. Okay, use it to run sponsored adverts rather. So you use that remaining thirty thousand naira. Let's say you take ten thousand out of it, recharge your phone for a month or two, 
and then use the remaining balance to run sponsored ads you don't even need people to help you run sponsored ads these days yes if you have the budget for it you can you can meet um, experts to help you run sponsored ads but basically you can run sponsored ads on your own you tell your family you tell your friends to tell their friends that you're into cleaning business post it on your whatsapp status that one you don't need to run ads for it like i just put it on your whatsapp status so your friends see it and then you can advise them to please share your contact to other people that this is the business you now do okay aside from that once you start getting one or two clients and you do the job to their satisfaction they tend to tell other people ah i have I, I i have somebody that i employ to help me do so and so and so and they are doing it so well so sometimes this word of mouth works way better than any adverts that you can even think of okay now if you run this business for some time you discover that as soon as your business grows you tend to now need more manpower some people start off this business as one-man business like they do it themselves they are the ones who go to people's homes to run stuff like this but over time they start having so much demands that they need to bring in extra workers to help them go to different people's homes to run this business so you see there's a business that you can start with fifty thousand to or less and then you end up making three figures four figures five figures if you do your business diligently and consistently the second business we'll be talking about here is selling of beddings bed sheets pillowcases curtains i know a few persons who sell beddings so beddings is another lucrative business that you can actually do and you can start gradually with like 100k or 50k and you will make something out of it okay now how do you go about starting this beddings business just go to your local market and look for people who sell materials okay buy these materials from these people and then locate a tailor and this person will help you sew all of these materials okay to your specifications to your size and whatnot just have very good eyes for design okay try to pick out designs that you know people will be will really gravitate towards try to pick out designs that are aesthetically pleasing because really most of these materials it's actually how you package it how you the designs you pick and how you you market yourself that you'll be able to make money out of it so now you can start small but the more you continue this business the more demands you start getting for bed sheets because these are really things that people use on a daily basis the more you you sell yourself out there the more businesses that you you tend to get right how do you get your target audience learn to advertise yourself advertisement is really very very key this period like if you want to grow a sustainable business right now you need to spend money on sponsored ads okay so let's say you have hundred thousand naira you can decide to say okay seventy thousand naira for logistics of moving around buying this best sheet and taking it to the tailor right and then thirty thousand or twenty thousand naira for running sponsored ads because when you run sponsored ads like this your videos will go to a wider audience much wider than the people who know you or who you already know so another way to maximize profits in this kind of business is for you to look for merchants who sell these materials in wholesale most likely from very big markets if you stay in port harcourt you can decide to go to aba or onisha source for merchants who sell these fabrics in large quantity wholesale prices and it will be cheaper than when you buy from your own market so visit states where they have um, merchants who will sell these materials way cheaper than what it will be sold in your own state if you don't live in Aba and you don't live in Lagos or you don't live in Onisha visit any of these markets that are close to you and buy from merchants who sell in large quantity when you do that it will give you an edge over others because you're buying this material way cheaper than what other people who buy from within will get and then you'll be able to sew it and sell it at your desirable rates okay that way you make more profit and you have an edge over your um competitors third business idea we'll be sharing here in this video is um self delivery agent so take note of the word self right you don't need a delivery bike okay delivery bike are for people who wants to start large you can start as a self delivery agent and grow from there now what do self delivery agents do for self delivery agents it's still the same thing they go pick up items from a vendor and then deliver to the clients of that vendor but this time they choose to go using public transport like i have a small business right 
I remember one time a client bought um, a printer from me. I was supposed to deliver this mini printer to, if you know Port Harcourt, Woji area, phase two. Woji phase two, I'll be phase one, somewhere like that. I called delivery agent, like a whole day. It took a whole day for me to get a delivery agent, a delivery bike. And it's a business I do, okay? I have a lot of delivery bikes um, contacts that I can call. I called about three that day. The two that assured me that they were going to come. One of them ended up calling me by seven to ask me if he should still come. And I'm like, by seven, will you be able to go there? The client is no longer even expecting you today because I had to plead with the client to just leave it until tomorrow. Okay. So most of us who have small businesses, we've had encounters with delivery, uh, logistics delivery people that they waste so much time to get your goods from one point, from point A to point B right so people who offer themselves if you can set yourself up as a trustworthy delivery self-delivery agent you collect this package from the vendor or from your client and then deliver it to your clients clients right using public transport now one way to succeed with becoming being a self-delivery agent is that you have to be conversant with your area okay if you live in port Harcourt, you need to know Port Harcourt fairly well, okay, to be able to navigate so that you will know you know the areas where you, you tend to meet traffic. So you avoid routes like that. Because when you avoid high traffic routes like that, it makes it faster for you to deliver all of the items at your disposal. Okay. You don't need to of course get home to deliver, but you can pack up the items you want to deliver for a day. If they are like five, you can be able to navigate routes easily. And before the end of the day, you finish delivering such items, okay? With time, you can even suggest way housing to your clients. If you have a big house and you are a self-delivery agent, you can suggest to your clients who is a vendor that, okay, CEO, I can store your items for you. So if you give me like five or six of these, your items, instead of me coming to your house all the way to your house, to pick up item whenever i want to deliver i can store some of these items in my warehouse and then for a fee of course it's not going to be for free for a fee and then i'll take these items to your clients whenever you have an order and if you be, you prove yourself to become a reliable person you see that these people will tell another person and that person will tell another person before you know you you'll be having money okay most of these self-delivery agents uh, make like 1,500 to 2,000 naira for one delivery. So imagine if you have five to seven deliveries in a day. Let's say you're making 2,000 naira for one delivery and you have five deliveries in a day. That's 10K. If you're making 2,000 naira for one delivery, you have like seven deliveries, right? In a day. That's like 14 to 16K, depending on how many deliveries you have is in a day. If it's 1,500 you're making for each delivery, and you have five delivery that's like seven thousand five hundred or so seven thousand five hundred naira in a day multiplied by that for a month and it will run into six figures get some money run sponsored ads advertise yourself tell your friends to tell their friends that you can help them deliver especially if you have friends who has who are small business owners like i am you can tell them that okay well, if you have an order let me know i will help you go and deliver these things to your clients please like and subscribe to my channel if you've watched these videos, this video up until this point, and you know you've gotten one or two benefits from this video, hit the like button. Okay, let's not even talk about subscribing, but I will tell you to subscribe, we'll join the family. But if not, just smash, smash the like button for me. Okay, I'll be waiting. Uh -huh. Now that you have smashed it, thank you for liking this video. Okay, it tells the algorithm that you're enjoying the video so that this video will be moved to others who will also benefit okay, from videos like this. The fourth business idea we're going to talk about here today is the food business. Okay, selling of food, but now not cooked food. Though. You look around your area and check which food is scarce in the area where you reside in. If you find out the food that is scarce, the type of food or types of food that are scarce in the area where you reside in, you can decide to source for these items in the areas where they are cheaper and then come and sell in your area. For example, I live in Port Harcourt, right? And let's say one thing that is a bit expensive here in Port Harcourt is yam. Okay, yams are kind of expensive in Port Harcourt. Um, let me now name something else. I don't know if it's so expensive in Port Harcourt, but let's say melon. Okay, let's say a goosey is expensive in Port Harcourt. Then you would need to source out this yam from states where one of the crops that they produce fairly well is yam. 
or Egusi. Okay, states like um, Benue State, Cross River State, where I come from, um, or your state, these are states that produce yams in large quantity. Melon are produced in states like Ogi State, Delta State, Taraba State. So if you decide to source from these states, because they are produced in these states, it will be cheaper in that state. And one thing I will advise is, don't buy from the person that bought from the person that bought from the farmer. If you can, try to buy directly from the farmers of this product. But if you can't get access to the farmers of this product, at least try to buy from somebody who bought from the farmer. It is cheaper for you if you buy it like this and then take it to your area to sell at an affordable rate. Okay? Another thing I would advise, in case you're scared of going to a state where you have, you don't know anybody, you don't know how to start up, ah, how do I now go from here all the way to Taraba State just because I want to buy yam? Think about it this way. Look for something that is scarce in your area and think about something that is easy to get in your village. Now, I, would, I have noticed that yam is expensive, right, in Port Harcourt. I can decide to now go to my village or the villages around my environs to get these items that are expensive and then bring it to my um, state of residence, okay, to sell. So you won't be scared that, okay, you're going to a, a state where you don't know anybody, like you've never been to um, um, Taraba State, for example. How do I now go there and start sourcing for things? Start from your village, okay? Get things that are cheaper in your village and come and sell in the town or in the city where you're residing. It will be easier for you to sell. And besides, you will know a few persons who will be willing to give you at a much more discounted rate than they will give an outsider. You get? So you can do that and you would make, like, you, you would really make nice profits from this business because of course you're buying it at like close to the cheapest rate that you can get this stuff and then you're selling it as high okay or as low as you would like it depends on how you package your business and how you advertise your business everything can be advertised on social media okay so if you're scared that you don't know who will buy go on your social media platform everybody has a facebook page everybody's mommy has a facebook page at this point okay so you can go on your social media and run sponsored adverts telling people that you sell things like this and you would see them come in their numbers okay my start from like one or two others three or four others and before you know it you'll be giving others here and there that you might even be swamped with others the fifth and final business idea i'll be talking about in today's video is drop shipping okay drop shipping business drop shipping business is also another business that is common but like a lot of people do not really understand how it works okay as a drop shipper you act like a middleman you don't have products for sale but you know someone who sells products. You carry those products, not like you collect it from them. You help these people advertise this product. And then when a buyer comes from you, um, you direct the buyer straight to the vendor or to the wholesaler. And this wholesaler is in charge of packaging and shipping the items directly to the buyer. You don't have the goods in your possession. You also do not take care of shipping. That one is not your business. Your own is you get clients from different sources and then you send it to your um, wholesaler or to your vendor. And this vendor will package their goods and send directly to them. Now, if you communicate properly with these your vendors, okay, most of them want to do businesses like this because it helps them sell their goods faster. They can offer it to tell you that, okay, an item that they're selling for 15000 they will sell it to you for let's say fourteen or twelve thousand. So you can decide to now say, okay, me, I will market this product and still sell it the same fifteen thousand that my vendor is selling, or I will make it a bit higher to let's say twenty k, eighteen k. Depend on your branding and on your target audience. Okay, you can decide to buy that item to advertise that item, not buy. And then when you have a seller, you collect money from the seller. Pay the amount stipulated to the buyer, to the vendor, and then have the vendor arrange for delivery. If you even discuss properly with this vendor, the vendor can decide to even brand these items with your brand. You stay in Nigeria and you're dropshipping in different countries and people are buying. Because these, the vendors or the, the, what's it called, business owners do not care where you're, as far as you're bringing customer, bring them. You get your commission, I get my 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 goods sold right i think in the area where i stay or um, 
in Igbo is called Oswahia, right? You go to the market sometimes, you see all those people that will be hustling you. Find girl, wait till you want buy. <laughs> Find girl, nah, but you want buy. Come, I get down. The, the, that person most likely doesn't even have a shop, okay? But he's going to take you to the shop of somebody who he has an understanding with. And this person will work based on the price that he has already agreed with you. Okay, so he will be in that shop negotiating price with you. You don't even know that he is not the owner of the shop. At the end of the day, once you pay, he will give the owner of the shop the amount that he's supposed to give the owner of the shop and keep the remaining balance for him. So if you know what it is called in any other language, please leave it down in the comments section. If you have any other business ideas that you think would um, can be started with 50 to 100,000 Naira as startup capital, leave it down in the comment section. I would like to know your thoughts. Which of these business ideas would you like to try on? Which of these business ideas would you like to start? I would advise that you don't overwhelm yourself by trying to start up all of them at once or three of them at once. You can start with one or two at most. If you start with one or two, see how it grows and then gradually you can think of, okay, um, focusing on that one or expanding to other business ideas as well. And then share this video to your friends. Anyone who you know is thinking about starting up a business and doesn't know which one to start with because of the funds that they have on ground, share this video with them. I'm sure they would definitely benefit from watching this video. Like and subscribe to my channel because I'll be posting subsequent videos. I've been posting videos like this and I'll be posting more videos like this for your viewing pleasure. Okay, click on the like button, click on the subscribe button, join the family, turn on your post notification and I will see you guys in my next video video.